That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Blink Twice! The directorial debut of Zoe Kravitz, which Amazon MGM Studios is releasing August 23rd, 2024. Directorial debut. Yes. We all know Zoe Kravitz. We do. And her, and her mama and her daddy. That's right. What is this film about? When tech billionaire Slater King meets cocktail waitress Frida at his fundraising gala, he invites her to join him and his friends on a dream vacation on his private island. As strange things start to happen, Frida questions her reality. What is your pull quote? Although thoroughly predictable, powerful symbolism, lush cinematography, and impressive performances from Aki and Arjona enhance the incredibly dark and disturbing third act of Kravitz's debut. Agreed. Mine. Blink Twice is a solid directorial debut that sometimes forgets the devil is in the details. Yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah. Uh, I, I did enjoy this film. Actually, I found it scarier than some of the horror films we've reviewed recently, like Long Legs or Cuckoo. Yeah, but by the time we get to the third act and it's revealed, uh, again, it's not surprising, but once the, you realize the extent of it, it was troubling. Um, the subject matter is very trou troubling, like your pull quote said. I mean, this is very predictable. If you watch a trailer, you know exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, but the story is that Channing Tatum plays tech billionaire Slater King, and we see that he's at a fundraising gala when two of the uh, cater waiters, mm -hmm. Frida, played by Naomi Aki, and Jess, played by Aaliyah Shawkat. They are working, and Frida seems to ha like be obsessed with Channing Tatum's character. Mm -hmm. Like, she's his biggest fan. And we realize why later on in the film. But um, she decides that she's going to break the rules, and they're going to get dressed up after work and attend the gala. So they, like, serve for a little bit, and then they put on these kind of ugly dresses. Gowns. <laughs> Gowns. And... Channing Tatum takes notice of Frida because she falls. So he helps her up and then we get this montage of them spending the evening at this gala having a gay old time. And when he's ready to leave, he says, hey, do you and your friend want to come with my friends and I to my private island? And they go. And when they get there, immediately we know something's wrong. Gina Davis is Channing Tatum's assistant. Stacy. She's collecting everyone's cell phones. Mm-hmm. But what's happening, so spoiler, although predictable, is that Channing Tatum and his buddies, played by Simon Rex, Christian Slater, mm -hmm. um, Haley Joel Osment. Mm -hmm. I got that right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Very good. And uh, LaVon Hawk, who is, of course, the child, one of the children of uh, Ethan Hawk and Uma Thurman. The little twink? Yeah. Really? That's him? Yes. Oh, okay. So there are three guys, four, and then there's a bodyguard. Uh-huh. Um, God, Thurman's genes are strong because Maya and her brother favor her. <laughs> really? Quite okay. I didn't recognize. I but anyway, these guys are drugging the women and assaulting them sexually. But the gag is that the drug, like other drugs we're familiar with that are used for the same purpose the women lose their recollection of that evening mm -hmm. so they're aware that they're being assaulted as it's happening and we know that via flashbacks but when morning comes they just seem happy to be on this island so how are they being drugged this there's a flower that we're told is indigenous to the island called desideria mm -hmm. and it's an extract from that flower that causes people to lose their memory. And it's being given in many ways, it would seem. We know for sure that there is a perfume that each of the women is given, mm -hmm. labeled Desideria. And then they are being, I mean, I don't know how many gallons of champagne <laughs> these women are consuming, but they're constantly being fed champagne with raspberries. And then Simon Rex is preparing these very elaborate dinners. Mm -hmm that I'm assuming are also laced with this drug. But something else that's indigenous to this island is a particular type of snake, mm -hmm. this yellow boa. And we find out halfway through that the venom from this boa is like an antidote to the flower. 
And we find that out because Jess, she gets bit by a snake. And then the next day she goes missing. And we find out that she went missing because she started to get her memory back. So and they had to kill her. So they killed her. But there's this, there are many staff on the island, like housekeepers, groundskeepers. And we see that there are like full-time staff members running around killing these snakes. And one of them is this old lady mm -hmm. who, whenever she sees Frida, she starts saying, Red Rabbit, Red Rabbit. One day, Frida wanders into a hut, which appears to be the manufacturing site of the perfume. And the old lady's in there and tries to get Frida, Red Rabbit, to drink from a bottle. And at first, Frida's ass thinks it's like liquor. So she takes a big hit of it and realizes that it's not. And we find out that she just drank a bunch of the snake venom mm -hmm. but immediately after that well some time passes like she takes a nap wakes up and <laughs> starts to get her memory back and that's when she, that's when she realizes that she's been assaulted and witnessed her friend get murdered in front of her and witnessed her friend get murdered saw the other two ladies who oh we didn't mention the other ladies so there are three other ladies on the island with frida and jess mm -hmm. one is played by adria arjona from hitman Yes. Mm -hmm. Sarah. And then there are two other ladies. Uh, Camilla and Heather. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now that Frida has this knowledge, she's trying to figure out what to do. And she convinces Adriana? Adria. Adria, sorry. Well, Sarah, I think is Sarah. her character name. Um, who I really liked in The Hitman. And she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. They're all beautiful. But Adria, mm -hmm. Sarah, S Sarah, is convinced to drink the antidote. And now she knows what's up. And they actually have a really good scene where they're both kind of admitting to each other that things just aren't right here. Mm -hmm. But they have to devise a plan. So they realize that they need to get the other two women's memories back. And kind of a fun scene where they... Um, shots. Shots! <laughs> so they're basically having the, making the women think they're drinking tequila, but it's laced with the antidote. It takes those women much longer to get their memories back, it would seem. Mm -hmm. But it all culminates in a final dinner scene mm -hmm. with Shaka Khan's Ain't Nobody playing in the background where the other two women get their memory back. And then it's a very satisfying showdown where most of the men get taken down and we're left with Channing Tatum. Slater. And Frida burns down the palace but she saves Channing instead of, let, uh, instead of letting him burn up and then we flash forward some time and we realize that she gave him the desideria so that he can forget so he sees all the damage and all the dead bodies and he freaks out and then we flash forward some time like next year to that same fundraising gala and we see that Frida has married Channing Tatum, and now she's the CEO of his billion-dollar tech company, The End. So, predictable, but exhilarating and very satisfying at the end when we realize that these women are going to be able to take down these men. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I had a lot of questions. A lot of things don't quite make sense to me. Yes, uh, the, like specifically with the timing mechanism of the uh, what they're being drugged with, and how it could, the other thing is they are doing drugs <clears throat> and drinking all day long for days on end. It seems like that's all they're doing. That's all they're doing is drugs and drinking. So yeah, how do you? What's the pharmacology behind this memory loss? substance and how they're administering it and because these ladies seem to remember i mean i'm i'm sure that there are i mean i know there are drugs that people use for this purpose that yes. cause your memory to lapse for a period of time it, it just seems all very flimsy like this is a very high profile man because of course immediately you think epstein, epstein island but channing tatum's character the film opens with him doing an interview explaining where he's been because everyone's been looking at him or looking for him because I didn't mention that he's he got in trouble for being a bad boy quote unquote mm -hmm. we're not explain it's not explained what he did but he had this his P, his uh, PR team had him step down as CEO and then he vanished for a while so during this interview in the opening of the film he explains that he got away to get therapy and reflect 
and he's really sorry. And the interviewer is like, well, where did you go? Well, I bought an island, so I've just been chilling out there. So it's, it's interesting that he, the, the combination of what he's doing to these women and the group of men he's doing it with, we never get a sense of how close they are, how much does he trust these people, that he would leave it to chance almost that he doesn't get caught. Well, they're, they're just, they're just a, I mean, the suspension of disbelief is quite great because, you know, the other thing is everybody's bodies reacts a little differently to drugs. You, like, your weight, again, what else you've ingested. I mean, all of that comes into play. Yeah. Also, the perfume seems to be a major thing because we hear mentioned more than once of characters being told, oh, you smell different, mm -hmm. meaning you have been wearing the perfume or you stopped using it. Mm -hmm. So because of that, it made me feel like, is the perfume the main way? Because the one twink who was assaulting women, he starts using the perfume mm -hmm. and then he starts to change because he's not remembering what's happening. Mm -hmm. It would seem like that's the only thing he consumed. Like, but that's also a lot harder to control because right. they're at the dinner table telling each other they smell good. It's like, but does that mean that you ingested some of the drug then? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Again, though, that might be a little nitpicky because I think the the powerful statements are in what's what's really happening. So the biggest gag for me of the story is related to Red Rabbit. So why is this? groundskeeper calling Frida Red Rabbit. So Frida, we see in the opening of the film, she likes to do her own nail art. Mm -hmm. She actually has like an Instagram page with her nail art. And on this trip, she has like green lizards or something. But we find out that this is not Frida's first time hanging out with Channing Tatum. Last year's fundraising gala, which we know she worked because her boss told her. She was too chatty. Right. Keep it more professional this year. You need to be invisible, he says. She was taken to his island last year mm -hmm. and abused. And during that trip, she had red rabbits on her nail. So I believe that that's why the old lady gave her the antidote, because she probably felt bad for her. Frida also has a big scar on her face. And we learned that that scar came from the previous trip when she had red rabbit nails. She tried to escape that time, but Chanin caught her and she ended up falling on a rock mm -hmm. and cutting her head open. It's also during that Red Rabbit trip, Christian Slater, who looks really good, I have to say, mm -hmm. he's missing a pinky. And earlier on, we hear his buddies make fun of him, like, tell the story of how you lost your pinky. And he seems uncomfortable about it and never tells the story. And we know why he doesn't tell the story. He lost his pinky because Frida bit that shit off in the previous trip. Uh -huh. I thought the knowledge of that at the end of the film was the most gaggy part of the story. Yeah, I agree. And I l really like the visual callbacks that are going on there too, because the opening uh, shot of the film is this little green lizard. And then we come to understand that that was what she saw as she smacked her head on that rock bleeding and out. bleeding out. Um, the title of the film, Blink Twice, I think we, we get a lot of like subliminal imagery, like mm -hmm. flashes of things that happened before. And as the film goes on, we realize what it is. But early on, like the lizard, it's, um, it's effective. I do think the symbolism is a little heavy. <clears throat> Gina Davis is always carrying around these red bags and she's always fumbling with them. And the red bags contain the perfume. And, and then there's this, the gag that annoyed me, the most is uh the chair that they can't seem to find the right place for this pink chair oh let's talk about that because i don't know what that was supposed to represent <laughs> channing tatum in his palace he has a big front room and he has this red sitting chair and he keeps asking everyone if like he's saying it's not in the right place and gina davis seems annoyed like i've moved it before and you don't like it how many places can we put this chair what do you think that chair represents? I don't, like a throne? Kind of like how in the front room, the chair was the symbolism of... Oh, sure. The Brandy Catherine Hunter movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think you could read a lot of things into that, but I, I think I was mostly annoyed at how fussy they were about it. Like, like who... <laughs> I, don't I know. agree. I think we see a lot of the champagne being poured with the raspberries. And, and lots of, you know, repeated lines like... Uh, 
what the the main refrain is forgetting is a gift, right? Right. And and but I really like how that's talking about how really that's toxic to us if we don't process our trauma. We can't just numb ourselves indefinitely. And I think there are some more subtle things that work well because in the catering moments when they're in the opening, the two women are kept they, they keep being told to smile. You have to smile. You have to look happy. You have to fake it. And then they get to this island. They 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 believe that they're having the, you know the time of their lives. And then when their eyes are opened, when they you know eat the fruit of knowledge from the snake. I also like that reversal with Eve, uh, in biblical terms. The uh, Adria and Naomi start telling each other they have to do that. Remember to smile. Remember yeah. you have to fake who you are right now. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think there's a lot of really interesting layers going on uh, with how women have to navigate the world. Yes, the broad, like the broad strokes of the themes are very effective and feel timely. Yes, but, but I, if you've ever been in a situation where somebody's behavior is starting to become a danger to you and you have to find a way out, I, I mean, if you, I feel like if you've ever had to experience that, uh, getting away safely, this third act is, I don't, I don't want to say triggering, but... Uh, it's affecting. It's affecting, yeah. So getting back to forgetting as a gift, we get mentioned twice of Channing Tatum's childhood, his character's childhood, and how bad things must have happened because he tells Frida, I can't remember anything before the age of 10. Mm -hmm. And then we hear him mention how his sister really hates the fact that he can't remember their childhood because she's traumatized from it. I really wish we would have understood more. I mean, clearly... This character of, what is his name? Slater? Slater King. Slater King. He's an effed up dude mm -hmm. who's sick and like he's a monster. Mm -hmm. So clearly the, the culmination of a lot of things led him to be the person he is in this movie. But I, I kind of wanted a little bit more. Well, the same with Frida. It, 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 we know less about Frida. We know less about Frida except she talks, there's, she's sitting on the bathroom in the beginning scrolling through Instagram. Um, and you see the spine of a book, success is the best revenge. And then she tells a story about how that was something her mother told her. And really, that's the final moment of the movie. Her, her revenge is being the successful CEO of this company. Um, but I, 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 the first hour of the film feels really sleepy and repetitive. Yes, um, because you know exactly where it's headed. So yes. So you're just waiting for the ball to drop. And it's spinning its wheels because, well, we are getting tidbits that play into what's going on. There really isn't any character development. And, and I think that's made, uh, probably the biggest fault of the film because I think had we known... I, I would have to imagine that at least in the previous year when the assault first happened to her, she would have been getting flashbacks of what happened most likely. Uh, and trying to process that. And right. I, I, I guess I'm curious about that period of her, this character's life. Yeah, the year that preceded the current events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. There's also a character we meet him, Kyle MacLachlan plays him, po posing as the therapist for Slater King. And they meet, that's where we get the line about blink twice if you need help when they're at this, this soiree fundraiser. And then when Kyle McLaughlin comes back visiting on the island, he pretends not to recognize Frida. And she's like, no, 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 we met at the, the fundraiser. And he's like, oh, yeah, I guess I don't remember. Come to find it's because he assaulted her. But it's just funny how he, he was afraid of what she would recognize, so he pretended not to know her at all. Right, and then we see him assault her again. And then at the very end of the film, now that Frida is the new CEO, he, Kyle McLaughlin, approaches her and pretends like, oh, I don't know you. And she goes, oh, yes, we do. She's like, I know you rich. Yeah. I just, yeah, there were, there's a lot I like about it, but also I want more. Sure. Like but, squeeze more of the juice out of the sure, thing. But that's not a bad thing. No. Per se. Well, speaking of that, I, I hate to do it, but I, uh, she, she might not make top 10, but I am going to put Frida on the worst hair list only because, so she has a pixie cut. For most of the, for the entirety of the film, and we find out that she has just cut her hair to look like that, and I think it looks really cute on her. It so does. that's not the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is that when she goes to the island, she leaves straight from the party, so all she has is that ugly gown on, and that's it. So she has no like hairstyling tools or products in her room. We see her room, and the only thing that's in there is some lip gloss, which we should get back to. But um, she gets her hair wet several times, 
and I just don't know how she would have been able to style it. So that kind of bothered me. And then when now, now that she's the CEO of a billion dollar company and is married to the the tech billionaire, she is wearing like the most basic shake and go bob wig that I really wanted to now like after seeing that she has become this person, I think she should have been styled like very regal, like a head full of braids and this like fabulous like power suit. But as it is, she looks kind of like <laughs> sure. I don't want to say what she looks like, but it, it's not great. I but I think that you can appreciate if you've seen her play Whitney Houston, the, her range because I mean it's night and day. Between, it is between I want to dance with somebody in this because and I I was quite impressed by her. Um, Christian Slater, I was a no, I I like seeing him, but. All his character does the entire film is take Polaroid pictures. Yeah. And that shit got annoying. Mm -hmm. And it plays a part because at one point, once Frida's gotten her memory back, she she's trying to find her cell phone because she knows they're locked up in the house somewhere. And she comes across the phones, but there's no service. And then a box filled with Polaroids. And it's all of the people who have been on the island, men and women. And it's also during that moment where she finds the Polaroid of herself. We don't see it till the end of the film, but that's when she realized that she had been on the island before. So very, it's like uh, the nightmare version of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. So I'm glad that we had the Polaroids, but I, I mean, do you not think that he's? Why did he take so many damn pictures? I, well, you know, it's just like watching stuff about slavery and the Nazis. It's just like when when you're doing things, you're you're consumed by the evil that you're doing, and then you're kind of obsessed with it and can't not talk about it and document it. I think historically we see that kind of behavior. So at the end, when the women get the upper hand, Frida assumes that Gina Davis's character might be under the spell. So well, she drank shots with the girls. Well, the, yes. The so, women. Yes. So as the other two ladies were having shots, they gave Gina Davis shots thinking that would help their cause. And again, the timing of when Gina Davis gets her memory back is very different. But in the end, we see that Gina is mad mm -hmm. because she says, like you already mentioned, forgetting is a gift. So she didn't want to know what they were doing. Uh, yep. And that is probably uh, Frida's best line is in that moment because she, she stabs uh, Gina Davis and when she's bleeding out, Gina Davis goes, help me. And she goes, I tried, bitch. <laughs> that is the best line. And then a really good moment uh, before that or after is Beyonce, uh, Frida and Sarah are walk. They also are forced to wear these white, like during the day, they wear these like white sarongs, sarongs with like white bikini tops. Mm -hmm. And then at night they wear these white like wrap dresses, but they're very flowy and pretty on the ladies. But at the end, when they're walking towards the palace to take down Channing Tatum, they're all dirtied up. But while they're walking towards it, it's, I think the film's shot beautifully. But uh, while they're walking towards it, Beyonce's I'm That Girl is playing. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a very effective use of that song. I agree. I should, so shout out, though, to the cinematographer, Adam Newport Barra, who also, showed, who also shot uh, The Last Black Man in San Francisco, which is... I highly recommend if you haven't seen, but... I criticized Channing Tatum in... Fly Me to the Moon. Because his makeup was just outrageous. I think he looks better in this film. I agree. And he does a really good job of playing, like, a creep. And in the end, when he's talking to Frida, because now he has gotten the upper hand on her for a minute, he's telling her, like, you know, I'm good at faking being sorry. And then he has this moment where he starts, like, shouting I'm sorry, like, 20 times. I thought that was pretty sobering. Well, because he says forgiveness, there's no such thing as forgiveness. It doesn't matter. Or it's He says impossible. there's no forgiveness. There's just forgetting. Because he's shouting, you know, sorry, but she can't, clearly she can't forgive him. Yeah. And that's when she decides, because then he leaves because he hears gunshots and he thinks that Frida is incapacitated, but she's able to cut herself out. And she decides to put the desideria, because another symbol is that Channing Tatum is constantly vaping. So she puts the desideria in his vape. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So then he forgets what's going on and freaks out. Um, Which I, and I didn't really, I don't, I don't know that we necessarily need that there because immediately he forgets. And yeah. Uh, and again, maybe that's how it's That's suggested. how the drug works. I don't, I don't know. know. Uh, but 
Uh, it felt jarring. It felt jarring, and I, I don't think we need. I think it would have been uh, just as satisfactory to have these two women conquer him, and then Kravitz could still have the final moment where we realize that Frida is now the CEO. Would it, and that, and we get that at this point he's under the influence of this poison. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It just seems to. It seems very truncated. Overall, I did enjoy this movie. Yeah, I mean, there are shades of uh, like a farm centric, farm centric uh, get out came to mind a couple times, but uh, it, it also reminded me of other recent films like The Menu or Infinity Pool, although I like this a lot better than Infinity Pool. Um, but yeah, I, I, for a debut, uh, very unexpected. Kravitz co wrote it with uh, her high fidelity. Uh, co-writer, she starred in that series in 2020, E.T. Uh, Fiegenbaum, and also a first uh, screenplay for him as well. Good job. What would you give Blink twice? Three. I think it's good. Three out of five. Join us on Patreon and listen to our podcast. Bye.